um, I definitely um, are excited, you know, as I always say, um, because it's a great learning experience and I think it's fun um, and it's great strength and knowledge and information. And I think it's just proving itself and showing itself true. Um, but tonight, uh, we've been looking over a couple of different passages and stories from the beginning of the Bible with God and Abraham, um, giving Abraham the blessing and showing him the blessing. And what I'm noticing is that he's showing this a generational blessing take place. And it's actually coming down through different generations um, to where we watched and saw um, the children of Israel um, go through the blessing that Abraham was given through Moses um, fulfilling the blessing um, all the way down to uh, talking about how Jesus was the blessing for us and became the reason that the death angel passes over us and we're able to um, thank God and praise God for being um, or giving us the secrets um, on how to overcome the obstacle. But Tonight, I wanted to bring out a story on the passage um, in the Bible on John, in John, the second chapter, um, first verse, if you want to follow along. Um, and it's talking about, um, it's basically about a party. And before we get into the text, I want to talk about um, a party that's lost its mind. And when we think about a party, um, you know, and everyone's enjoying themselves and the music is good and everybody's having a good time and um, when you think about a party and the wine at the party making the party just a little bit better I think about a party with either no wine or if you if you're someone that maybe don't drink think about a party that has no music or think about the party that is missing the part that you like and when we think about a party with no wine we think about um, you know how something can lose the sweet part and could still be going on and you're still and trying to enjoy something and it's not good anymore you're trying to figure out how do I get back to the party with the wine the party that was good and I think the wedding at Cana um, in the chapter second chapter of John it it's it's it brings us to a point to where Jesus is now come down and he's kind of sitting he's sitting at a party and if we remember in John 1 which I'll, I'll go over to John 1 and I just want to read John 1 it, it starts off with teaching us on basically uh, how we came about to before we saw Jesus at this particular party and how things happened up until that point and John 1 says in the beginning was the word so we start off with in the beginning was the word and the word was God so when we're looking for God and we're trying to figure out who God is and where God is the word is God and God is the word and it's saying in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and it says he was in the beginning with God it says all things were made through him and without him not a thing was made that was made it says in his life and the life was the light of men. It says the light shines in darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. It says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. It says he came as a witness to bear the light that all might believe through him. And it says he was not the light but, the, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives to everyone was coming into the world. And it says he was in the world and the world was made through him yet the world did not know him and it says he came to his own and his own people did not receive him and what we're seeing is basically what john is doing is john is describing to you to where we're seeing that when people are looking for god we're trying to figure out where god is god is the word and what he's showing you that god is he was made into flesh and wrapped up in and came down through the generations and we have jesus which in chapter two, he brings us to chapter two and we have Jesus coming to a party. And it's kind of funny that he brings us to a party because it's 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 a wedding. And, and at a wedding, the, the important thing about a wedding is God is all about weddings because we see weddings from the beginning of the Bible with Adam and Eve all the way to the end 
with 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 the the um the marriage and with, with the uh, the sheep. So with with God and and, and revelations, um, it's talking about the church and things like that. So when we look at God and marriages, God uses uh, weddings and marriage a lot to explain, um, you know, a lot of different things and to explain the relationship part of things and how things are to where a marriage is the process in the joint of a close association. And so we understand, um, you know, the marriage and how God uses the illustration. As we read through John and the second chapter, I think things will make a little bit more sense as to what we're reading. So um, going into the chapter, uh, we understand that we're talking about Cana. And Cana is the place where Jesus performed his first miracles. So um, John's second chapter, first verse, it goes, On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. It says, Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. It says, when, the, when they ran out of wine, or when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. It says, Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. It says, when the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants had drawn the water, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. And says so this the first sign, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. And it says, after this, he went down to Capernaum with his mom, his mother, and his brothers, and his, and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. And so, what in this story, I want to kind of look at the story right here where we're talking about Jesus at the wedding, and. There's a couple of different things that I want to kind of point out. And to me, the story is about uh, leaders and followers. And the thing is, um, a leader isn't too good or it doesn't mean too much unless a leader has followers. And a follower isn't so good unless the follower has a good leader. And when we look at the passage, uh, we're talking about Jesus being that a party and the party running out of wine and when we think about a party running out of wine we think about something that has lost the good part something that we love to do that's maybe not fun anymore something that has changed and and things aren't as good as they used to be and we've run out of wine and we've come to the question and we're trying to figure out how do we get our wine back and that's why I think a lot of people are at the point in trying to see how do we get the wine back? How do we get back to the good part? And this story, um, when we look at the story, we have Jesus' mother coming to him and she, she asks him, she says that, that they have run out of wine and she's, tell, she's telling him for a reason because she wants him to, she feel, wants the to feel the blessing. And she knows that, that he has the capability of fulfilling the blessing. And when she 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 turns to him and she tells him she says she says that she says that that they have no wine and and jesus says to her that woman what does this have to do with me and he asked her the question he said like then what was this what does this party what does this issue that you that you're bringing me have to do with me because sometimes jesus will will put us in a position where we can be blessed anyway and he'll be at our parties that have run out of wine. He'll be at, at, at the place to where we have we have run all out of the good part. And he'll still be there with us. And when we turn to see who's all around, everyone may be gone, but Jesus will be there waiting for you to just say, just say, turn, turn to him and, and try to figure out 
what is it that you need to do to get the wine back? And when when his mother come to him, he told her that, that not only what does it have to do with me, but my hour has not yet come. And so if we think about that, that's almost like him saying no, um, almost like him saying that, that this, this won't happen, that I can't do what you're asking me to. And so what we see is that that his mother talk, turned to the servant in verse 5 and tells the servants to do whatever he tells you to do, which means she's positioning the servants for the blessing to happen. She's positioning them for the miracle to where when we ask God for things and when we're asking for the things that we want and we're asking for how to get the good part back and we're asking for how to fulfill and fix things in our life, we ask God how and we have to understand that sometimes we, we may have to take a route that we don't like, but we have to do whatever it is that God tells us to do and when we're a good servant a good servant understands how to carry out a, a, a task when, when you're given a task you understand how to follow rules how to follow instruction and and carry out the specific task given at hand and when we understand that his mother is the leader right now and the servants are the follower and in order for this to work the, the good leader and the good followers must work together because in order to be a good leader you must be a good follower because one thing that I have always learned that that if if, if servant is beneath you the leadership is definitely beyond you and, and one thing that we see here that the servants have to play a such large part in order to make this whole thing work and then when we look it says that now there's six stone water jars and they're for Jewish rites of purification and what we understand is these that these six jars are, are holding are holding the 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 uh, representation of the six the six different ages that has gone forth in order to fulfill this blessing that are still imperfect and are still trying to get it right to where we are watching the blessing now be put into place and now this is the fulfilling of the blessing for us actually going into effect and happening to where these are the six stone jars to show that everything and everything before us will still be carried and it'll have to take a certain type of plan and then on the seventh verse when we see Jesus starts to talk to the servants we understand that there's a schedule and that God moves on a specific time frame and that God has everything in place and everything set on a specific schedule and and that we have a God that's that that moves in time and that when Jesus started to speak to the servants he said to the servants to fill the, the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim and he said to them now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast and so they took it and when the master of the feast tasted it the water he's now become wine he didn't know where it come from though the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said everyone serves the good wine first and when people have drunk freely then the poor wine but you have kept the good wine until now and what you have to understand is that that sometimes people don't understand that Jesus is capable of these things until he shows them. And what we have to understand is God has come through Jesus and God has come into the flesh. And through Jesus, he has, he has shown us in the flesh these miracles. And has shown us who he is in the flesh to where he has given us a chance to see him in the form of flesh at a party. And I think the party is important because... A lot of us in our lives, we, we, we experience a party, we experience having fun, we experience the good things, we experience having a good time all the time. And sometimes, and sometimes the only way that God can get our attention is if he takes the wine away from our party. If he stops the good part to where we try to have to figure out what's going on. He'll shake some things up so that you have to open your eyes and start to see and, and to, to reveal to you what's actually going on to where we understand the book of John who was the closest to us and revealing to us who Jesus is to where we see that he comes in revelation from the wedding to Nicodemus to the woman at the well in Samaria to um, Jerusalem with the pool of Bethesda where he tells him the man to get up and walk of 38 years and we see in John 6 to 5 fishes and the seven loaves of bread to where we are seeing God come down to show us who he is and 
our our perception to what we can understand and have a, a, a closer relationship to exactly who he is and be able to see see the parallel and God wants us to have a, 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 a what's called a paradigm shift to where we start to change and everything starts to turn and our thinking starts to change in a way that, that we've never seen it before and, and, and God is trying to show us that we have to be um, have to be servants that that figures out our tools and uses our tools to where we have to understand that we have to be like that the favorite restaurant to where we all have our favorite restaurant and we all have this favorite place that we love to go and 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 they they, they have a steak or they have something that you like to where it's a specific taste that you're looking for and it's something that drives you enough to get you back to that restaurant to spend your hard-earned money to where we want the people to feel the same when they run into us as Christians, when they run to us as, as children of God, as the children of, of, of the only one. We want them to understand what it's like to be loved by you, loved by God. In order for people to understand, we have to give off a certain aroma, a certain feeling, a certain uh, career. So we're, we're making sure that, that, that we're, we're putting our best foot forward and actually being a representation of 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 God, and then we understand about this text is that we 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 have to understand that there's some things that has to happen in order for the transition to work, and and it was in the move of the servants from the water going from in the pots to actually the transition over to the headmaster to where something happened, and I want you to understand when you, when you're a servant that you understand how to follow rules correctly. And, and, and God gives you some rules and, and gives you some things to do. When you follow instructions correctly, there are some things that can happen. And when, when we get in our word and we, 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 tell, we tell God that it's not our will, but only his will be done. And we get into the will and the work and, and we get into the things and, and, and the, the examples that God has given us and shown us. And we understand what it is that we need to be doing and start to work that thing. Then it'll work out and it'll work itself to where all of the tools that we have we have that we need we have them in our hands and that the things that we go through is God preparing us and getting us ready but you have to be willing to learn you have to be willing to serve because serving is the first uh, character character trait of leadership and so what we understand is in this past passage that we're looking at uh, leaders and servers doing and understanding their duties on both ends to where they are both important to where they, they it, it takes both of them um following and, and serving and 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 uh using the right tools in the right direction and and being able to be interchangeable to where we're not worried about what level someone is on to where we we all have a part to play and we're all important to where the, 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 the assistant is just as important as, as the head man in charge because the assistant carries a, a, a much important role to keep that man in place. And when we look at how these relationships work, how the marriages work, all of the marriages and all of the, the, the covenants, all, everything that we get into, whether it's a business or relationship, it all comes to a point to where it loses the wine and it loses the good part. And we have to figure out how to get back to the good part. And in the story, I believe it's 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 um it's a specific point in this being uh in the point that it's in after coming to the revelation of who Jesus is and how Jesus came about to now we are at a party and flesh and, and, and we are at a correlation to people to where we are at a party that has lost its good part. And and and, and God has shown us that I have an example set for you that if you just follow this example that that you can get it back in no time but it will take a specific course it will take uh, I, I will take a a, a, um, a certain a route to get it back it's just not easy it's just not a skip and a jump but there are some specific routes that must be taken and there's some specific things that must be done in order for you to get it back and so tonight um, just looking at the party that has lost its wine and what about the party that has lost its wine and, and, and what are we going to do when we lose our wine? Um, how are we going to react? Uh, 
what will be the next step. And then we, we, we want to make sure that, that we're not missing our blessing because of small things. And, and, and we have to understand that, that like his mother did, we have to have the perception and we have to know who to go to in the midst of our party losing the wine and, and understand that uh, uh, that she had to know that he was able to fulfill the blessing. And she had to know that in, in the mix of time that she didn't have a lot of time. She had to make um, her next move, her best move. She had to be specific in how she handled the situations where we have to be specific and strategic. And she was able to get right to someone who could handle the issue right away. And sometimes we have to make sure that we're moving specifically and directly to the source to handle the issue. And, and, and I think that's part of the issue that we see in, in today's world is that we don't, we haven't gotten to the base and the root of this issue and it's, it's, it's bothering us and it's, it's, it's making us lose our wine to where we're having to do something and God is showing us that there's a move that must be made for us to get our wine back. And, and as you read through um, the story and you, and you, you start to um, revitalize yourself, you start to refill your glass with wine as you start to understand that in the overcoming of, of, of the mental uh, strife and the, in, uh, the turmoil and the, the, the um, tactics to keep you fearful and to uh, the population control, different things that's happening we have to understand that we have a covenant and that we're covered and 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 all the way down through he has shown us a generational blessing that has taken place and it has fulfilled itself to where we have to understand that it's fulfilling itself now and it will be fulfilling itself forevermore but until we get into the word and understand that we have tools to use and different things we can put in place to keep us then things will be just that tough so i want to make sure that we're working on getting our wine back and we're understanding that 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 Jesus is at our party with no wine and that we do have some we can turn to someone we can turn to so if we just understand that 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 Jesus is to where we can go and understand that he can perform the miracle that this thing will be a lot easier and and if we just go to uh, the source that we can have a much better ending and and this party can get back to the part with the wine and so tonight i just wanted to make sure that that in in the mix of all of this that your party has lost its wine but there's a way to get it back and and we want you to know the right steps and uh, be able to have a have something on their tool belt to use against the fight and to use in the fight and so remember that 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 we have uh um coverings and understand that the party may have lost may have lost the wine but you can get it back